welcome to another episode of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah, and this is a podcast all about crochet, a little bit of sewing and knitting, and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. How are you? It's been, it's been another two weeks. We are now almost at the end of June, and summer, the first day of summer was this week, just a couple of days ago. So I hope that it's warm where you are. It is blazing hot here, <laughs> but that's okay. That's why we live in Florida. I have a lots of things to tell you, but first, just two important announcements. Number one, the Love Yourself Cal Crochet Along is still going on until the end of June. So we have about another week, a little bit more than a week maybe, um, for you to finish your projects, put them in the finished objects thread on Ravelry, please go in and put them in. We will have prizes. Um, one of the prizes that has kind of come in over the last week is Rosina of the fabulous Zines and Roger podcast. Hi, Rosina, if you're watching. Um, if you don't watch her podcast, you totally should. She's basically crochet famous. She has designs in the major UK magazines. So she's pretty fabulous. And she has offered three of her patterns to three lucky winners. So I will draw that once the crochet along is concluded before the next podcast episode and you will, I will get you in touch with her so you'll be able to pitch, pick a pattern. So get your finished objects in there and go check out the finished objects thread, go check out the chatter thread. There are so many amazing things. Second important announcement is I did talk about having a meetup in the last podcast episode. We'll be doing that in St. Pete. Um, it's definitely going to be on a Saturday, probably around lunchtime, maybe a little bit later. Um, I don't have a specific date for that yet. It will be in August. It will probably be the middle of August, but I will try to have a specific date nailed down by the next time I record an episode. That way you can mark your calendar. So if you live anywhere around the St. Petersburg, Florida area, Tampa, Sarasota, Bradenton, Lakeland, Clearwater, Newport Ritchie, anywhere around there, um, this is the meetup for you. But I will have more details on the next podcast episode. Okay, let's get into the good stuff. It has been kind of a crazy two weeks. I was traveling for from Saturday, the, I think the 9th through Friday the 15th. So I was not home at all for, a, for the first week. <laughs> I talked about that on the last podcast episode and I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, so I've really worked on three projects, but let's talk about what I am wearing because this is super, super exciting to me. While I was away, my test crocheters finished their work on my second crochet design, which is this right here. This is my Key Largo lace wrap, and the pattern has been officially released. It is on Ravelry, it has been live for a couple of days. I was going to wait until I published this podcast episode to release it. I just couldn't wait another day. Um, my tech editor <laughs> got it back to me super, super fast, and Luckily, there was just a few minor things that needed to be updated because my testers had done such a great job. So this pattern is now available on Ravelry. So I'm just kind of wearing it like thrown over my shoulders, but let me show you. It is, it's got this tulip pattern and it's a wrap. Now, the beauty of this pattern is that you can make it as long or as short as you want I have instructions on how to do that in the pattern or as skinny or as wide as you want. So feasibly, you could turn this pattern into a blanket. Why you would want to, I don't know, it's awfully thin. <laughs> but you could turn this into a blanket. I could make this twice the width. There's instructions on how to do that because the stitch pattern is a multiple. So, let me show you. This is the pattern. It's so official. Um, this is the cover, obviously, Key Largo Lace Wrap. This pattern is, it's not a complicated pattern. It just may be a little bit challenging if you've never worked with fingering weight yarn before, but I don't think that it is a challenging pattern. It's very rhythmic. You'll get the pattern repeat memorized very quickly. I tell you everything you need to know. Gauge is not really important. Now you can test gauge if you want, but again, this is a wrap. 
So you can make it as thin or as wide as you want it to be. So if you're coming up smaller, just add more stitches. If you're coming up larger, take them away. I have instructions specifically for a light fingering weight, which is what this is made out of, and fingering weight versions in the pattern. And you could make it out of sport weight, you could make it out of worsted weight, you just need to get it as wide as you want and then go from there. One other thing that I have included in this pattern, if I can find it, is lots of photos for one because I hate it when a pattern only has one photo at the beginning and I can't see how it's supposed to be worn or anything else. So I have a photo tutorial in the pattern that tells you how to work into the chain stitches because you can't just work under one strand of the chain stitch because it will compromise the structural integrity of the wrap. So if you see right here, this is where you work into the chain stitches for the to begin the next pattern repeat. And if you only worked under one strand, it would stretch way bigger. So we don't want that. So I've included a little photo tutorial on that in the pattern. And I have also included you can't really see that, but this is a row counter. So because you're doing pattern repeats, you repeat a set of rows a certain number of times or until it's your desired length. So one of the things that my testers mentioned, and I don't know why I didn't think of this, but they had put it into like an Excel document so they could tick off the rows as they were going through. I think that's a fabulous idea. So I included row counters in the pattern. So you can actually just go through and check off every single row you're on and know exactly where you are in the pattern at any given time. So I'm, this is, I'll give you just a, that's my photo tutorial. <laughs> so it says that, that the pattern is like eight, nine pages long. The pattern itself, the instructions is only like a page and a half, but um, with all of the supporting materials, it ends up being nine pages long. So this is available on Ravelry. Some of you have already grabbed a copy of it and I really cannot thank you enough. It's so, so exciting. And so far I have hit my goal. So my goal was to publish four patterns this year in 2018. And that would be one per quarter. And I published this one just a couple of days ago, which is before the end of June, second quarter. So I have three months to come up with another design and I am actually was swatching this morning for something and I'm not quite happy with it yet. Um, so I'm not gonna show, it's basically a tangled pile of yarn over on the couch behind me. So I'm not gonna show that right now cause I'm just, I don't know, I have a shape in my head but I don't know where I'm going with it yet. So next time I should have something to show you on that. Now this pattern is available for sale. Um, and if you have been with me for a long time, you will know exactly why I have decided to put out patterns for a price instead of free patterns. And I know everyone loves free patterns. I love free patterns. I am always looking for a good free pattern, but I'm also really willing to pay for patterns that I know are of a professional quality. And that is my goal. That's what I want associated with the Cozy Cottage Crochet is something really professional that's been tested by multiple people, has been tech edited, there's no mistakes, you can just have full trust <laughs> in the pattern knowing that it's going to get you what you need to get. So let me just share, you, share with you, now I shared this the last time that I released a pattern um, and some people told me not to apologize. <laughs> So I don't want it to make it seem like I'm apologizing for charging for this pattern. Um, however, I want to give you an understanding of what goes into the pattern. So this pattern, um, I sat down and I probably swatched for it four or five times. So there was that amount of time. Then I started crocheting. I got about this far and decided it wasn't wide enough because I had done gauge and then I didn't trust my gauge after I had done the first row, so I ripped some of it out. Silly, trust your gauge. Um, so I frogged the whole thing, <laughs> and then I started over, and now it is about 80 inches long, because um, that's how long I wanted it to be for a wrap. You could obviously make it much shorter, um, on, or, or, or longer if you're shorter or taller. So I don't know how many hours this took me. I should have been keeping track. But the crochet part alone, I would say, gosh, I don't know, 30 to 40 hours at least. That may be underestimating because I took this around with me everywhere. <laughs> everywhere I went, this is my pattern, the small pattern that I was working on. 
And then of course you had to, I had, I typed up the pattern um, and it went through several iterations. I would say I, it took me about a month of having the written pattern down before I was really happy with what it said. That does not mean I was working on it for a month straight. <laughs> I would work a little bit, put it down, come back to it, put it down, come back to it, etc. Um, and then we, we went to the beach and took photos. My husband is my photographer, so he is completely responsible for this super awesome photo. And then I send it off to the testers. This has been tested by six people. So, and they all gave me their feedback and their comments. And I, if you were a tester for me for this pattern, I'm so thankful for you. For one thing, my math was wrong. Not in the gauge, but in the row count. <laughs> For some reason, I forgot how to multiply. So get your patterns tested, people. So that is fixed. That was really the only major issue. There was just a couple of minor things that I added, like the row counter, although that's kind of major to me, like as a designer, but it's not a problem with the pattern. And then I got the pattern tech edited. So tech editing is normally $25 an hour. I have a fabulous tech editor named Kirsten, who is Rogue River Fiber Studio. She is fantastic and I love her um, so this pattern took an hour and a half to tech edit so that's $37.50 that it will cost to get the pattern tech edited now if you have purchased my treasure island shawl then you are responsible in part for paying for the tech editing of this second pattern because I don't want to put a pattern out there that has not been tech edited so that is all the work that went into this pattern it was an absolute joy and I love it but those are all that's the design process so if you have a giant blogger or, or somebody who's really well known and kind of has ad space on their website or something like that and they're offering patterns for free, it's because they're getting compensated somewhere else, usually. Um, whether that be ad revenue, they're receiving yarn support from someone, they're receiving some kind of endorsement or affiliate link deal, they're getting some compensation almost always for the patterns that they put out even if they're free. So I don't have a blog. <laughs> I am not going to ever start one, most likely, because I won't keep up with it. I know that about myself. This is my medium. Like, I want to talk to you face to face. I want to see your comments. I want to be in the community with you. I'm not going to keep up with a blog. So, I have still at this time, I there you will notice that there's no ads on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to be keeping it that way for at least the foreseeable future. Um, I, I don't see why I would add them. I personally don't really like them on YouTube. I feel like everything is covered in ads now. So as a way to support the podcast, if you want to support this, this is how you will actually get something <laughs> other than the podcast for your money. You'll get a pattern that has been tech edited and tested by everyone. And I love it. Oh, I love it so much. I was dying over my testers patterns. They were sending me photos. They're so pretty. And of course, um, this is a light fingering yarn. I have made this in 100% bamboo. It's Kristen Omdahl's Be So Fine yarn. Um, and I don't have the colorway because she does not, this particular color has been discontinued. She has another pink on her website currently. Um, the little card that came with this does not actually list the colorway. But this yarn was a lovely, lovely gift from my, one of my most one of my longest supporters of this podcast named Barb. She sent me this yarn so, so long ago, right after I first started recording podcasts and I've been saving it for something special and it really just brings me joy to know that I could make a design with the yarn that she sent me. So thank you, Barb. You're the inspiration for this shawl. And I will leave a link below in the Dropbox where you can look at this pattern on Ravelry. You can make this out of any yarn. So. I have made mine, of course, out of 100% bamboo. Some of my testers made it out of wool. Some of them made it out of cotton, a cotton acrylic blend. It depends on what you're looking for. So this is a summer wrap to me. That's why I made it out of bamboo. You can make it out of whatever you want. Just know that different fibers are going to affect your gauge in different ways. So this, not very stretchy. This is 100% bamboo. This is as wide as it gets. It really did not grow much when I blocked it. But if I was using Merino, it would grow a lot. So just make sure you check your gauge so that you don't end up with something twice as long as your body <laughs> and you can actually use it. So enough about that, I think. I'm just super excited, so I'm sorry if I'm rambling about <sighs> this pattern. I'm just, I guess I can call myself a crochet designer now. 
which is super weird. Let's move on, shall we? I have some finished objects to talk about. Two, which is crazy considering I have only worked on three things this week. Let me show you the first one. Now the first one is something I showed last time. I had gotten about this far. <laughs> Um, this is a, it's one of my, it's my first pattern. So it's my Treasure Island shawl. My mom wanted one of these. So I made her one. And I'm actually going to see her on Saturday, which is tomorrow. So I will, I had this finished and I washed it last night so that I could give it to her. So it is completely done. This is out of a worsted weight yarn. This is Lion Brand Heartland. Um, you can make this pattern again in any weight of yarn that you want from fingering up to worsted. And it's got this lace pattern. So, um, I used two balls of Lion Brand Heartland. One of the balls I had left over from my Habitat cardigan, and the other one I purchased, and this is how much I had left. I don't know how many grams that is. I didn't weigh it, but it's not much. <laughs> so, if you, are make, if you plan on making it out of Lion Brand Heartland, then you know you definitely need two balls. And if your gauge is really loose, like I'm a pretty tight crocheter, so if your gauge is really loose, you might even need a little bit more than that. So this is what it looks like. I took this with me to Alabama when I was gone all last week. Did not even touch it. <laughs> not one stitch. So it stayed about this big until I got all the way home. We got home late Friday last week. And then Saturday night I picked this up. I worked on it Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, and Monday, and it was done. So this is a super quick project because you increase to a point and then you start decreasing so it goes faster and faster and faster, which I love, I love, I love. So this is what it looks like. It's super soft. I don't know how much wear she's gonna get out of this because it's really warm <laughs> and it's the summertime in Florida, but I'm happy to do it. Green is her favorite color and mom, I know you're watching. You're so supportive. I appreciate you. I'm happy to make you all the things. So I'm really, really happy with this. I would always wear it like this, although, cause it's pretty shallow. Whoop, I almost dropped it. It's pretty shallow. You still could wear it over your shoulders if you wanted to. It would just look like that. Let me stand up. So that's what it would look like. It's not super long in the back, but I think in a worsted weight, it's long enough to where you could just drape it over your shoulders if you were feeling chilly. I don't know. I don't know how well it would work like this. <laughs> But there's plenty of different ways you could do it. And I feel like I need to make more green things because especially when my hair is red, I feel like this looks pretty good with my hair color. <laughs> Maybe I need to make myself one of these, but then I'll have three of them, three. This is actually the third one I have made <laughs> of my Treasure Island shawl, but this one's not for me, so it's okay. Although there was somebody who told me she has already made three of them and is starting on her fourth. That is a lot of one project. You made more than I have. The second finished thing that I have to show you is a pair of socks. Now, obviously they go together, but they don't match. <laughs> this is the one that was finished last week that I showed you. And this is the one that I was complaining the stripes don't match because there was no way I was gonna get. I only had one 50 gram ball. This is Knit Picks Felici in the colorway Hopscotch. So you get only 218 yards in 15 grams, which is, I mean, that's good for 50 grams, but I had this much left. This is like two grams of yarn. Tiny, tiny, because I stopped this sock at 24 grams just in case something went wrong and I needed a little bit extra leeway. So last time I was kind of complaining that this was a little too loose and that I was gonna decrease on my next pair. I have washed these. Um, you can actually wash these in the washing machine in the dryer. I, I know some people are like super against that, but I cannot be bothered to hand wash socks. I'll put them in the washer. I, I won't mind laying them flat to dry, but they did come out, I don't know how well you can see this. They're kind of fuzzy. Like they fuzzed up pretty well in the washing machine. 
Um, the dryer surprisingly did not make them any worse. And I feel like the dryer actually helped these socks because now they fit really well around the ankle. They are a little bit shorter than I would like them to be. I would like maybe another half a centimeter in the cuff because I feel like if I wore these with shoes, they're gonna slip down inside the shoe a little bit. Um, but I washed these and dried these and then I wore them around the house last night. So comfortable. Now I have, this is my second, third pair of socks. So I, have worn, I wore the first pair of socks that I ever made. They had a long cuff. Um, I wore them one time and then it got really hot. <laughs> then I finished my Pippi Longstocking socks and they're washed, but I have not actually worn them yet because their cuff is even longer and it's so hot. It's like 100 degrees. That's an exaggeration. It's like 90, but still. So I was wearing these last night because my feet were freezing and they were amazing. So I'm really happy with them. I don't know how well they're going to hold up. Of course, it's a merino <laughs> nylon blend and the more merino you have the fuzzier it is prone to get but i mean it's a sock so as long as the stitches themselves hold up i'm totally okay with that you really can't see i don't feel like you can see how fuzzy they are on the camera maybe like like right there like this kind of shadowy stuff that's fuzz so i'm thinking I'm really glad I wore these before doing the cuff on the pair of socks I'm wearing, working on currently because I, I was thinking about decreasing a lot of stitches because I thought it was going to be way, way too loose. I think I'm only going to decrease like two to four stitches because they fit really well after being washed. And I'm going to do instead of a three by one rib, I'm going to do a maybe a one by one rib and then it'll be super like pulled in on itself. And instead of doing... So I did 10 rows of three by one rib on these socks and it's just a little short. So I think I'll probably do five rows of just plain knit stitches and then start the one by one rib. And maybe I'll do 10, let's see if this is five. Yeah, I'll probably do 10 rows of ribbing and see. So um, once I had these on, they the fact that the stripes don't match didn't bother me as much as I thought it would and these are not blocked <laughs> and I'm sure they don't look that gorgeous they look better from far away but I don't care because they're socks okay they're socks I'm gonna be wearing them on my feet I am just thrilled to have a pair that I made that I was zooming around the house in and of course that probably didn't help the fuzz factor on the bottom of the foot because I was sliding all over our laminate floors in these socks so I'm gonna be wearing flip-flops the rest of today but maybe I'll wear shoes tomorrow and I'll wear these and because I, I do want to test them in a pair of actual shoes to see if the heel falls down or if they stretch out etc so I will update you on that in the future those are my two finished objects I do have some works in progress to show you none of which <laughs> um are, have been normally in rotation the last couple of weeks because like I said I was on this trip to Alabama so I did not touch the Treasure Island shawl in Alabama I did however do I was like right here last time I showed you these socks I did the entire heel turn heel flap and cuff on these socks on the way in the van because we drove there for like 12 hours and actually it ended up taking a little bit longer than that <laughs> for various reasons but I did all of this and this part takes forever I hate doing heels on socks <sighs> maybe I'll get maybe I'll become accustomed to them eventually but I don't really want to do an afterthought heel because this fits so well so I did this whole cuff on the ride up there I also did I started and am very far along on my rabbit hole cardigan which is a free pattern. I'm not prepared. I should have had this out already. <laughs> the Rabbit Hole Cardigan by Carmen Jorison. It is a granny stripe crochet cardigan. It is free online. If you just Google Rabbit Hole Cardigan crochet pattern, it will pop right up. And I am making it out of Stylecraft Special DK Batik. 
I guess it's not special DK. It's just Stylecraft DK Batik. Um, I had this pack of colors from Andrea, who is a viewer of this podcast. She ordered it for something and then decided she wasn't going to make that. Colors weren't really her. And so she sent it along to me to see if I could turn them into something. And I thought about it for a while. And then I decided that the rabbit hole cardigan would be where it's at. So I have one ball of each of these colors and four balls of this color. The amount of progress I have made on this is kind of insane. This is the only thing I worked on in Alabama, pretty much. Well, actually, I didn't even really work on it when we were in Alabama. I worked on it on the way there. <laughs> this is how much I have. The whole body is pretty much almost done. So the construction of this is really unique. You actually make, let's see if I can find where it starts, like right here. So you make this long shape first and you just keep going and going and going until it is the width of your shoulders and then you start going down the back and, and you stop going around and around. So this is the width of my shoulders and then you make the back to match. You just keep going down until it's the same length as the front. Now, I only, I long torso people problems, okay? I only followed the pattern and I knew that it was gonna be too short. And let me show you how short it is when I stand up. <laughs> it's basically like a crop top. So my belly button is here and this is where it stops. Now I'm sure I can get it to my belly button by blocking it because this is acrylic. I can block it and kill the acrylic. The reason that I did not want to make the foundation any longer is because I only have one ball of each of these. And I really don't have that much left. So I was concerned because I want the stripe pattern to match. So it goes in a certain sequence. And what I want to happen is I'm going to seam up the sides to my armholes and I'm going to do the sleeves continuing in this pattern. So once it's seamed up and the sleeves are done, then at the bottom, because it'll be joined then, I'm going to join a granny stitch going this way and use up this because I have more of this yarn. Now I will say that this yarn, like all of these are kind of tonal. They're kind of like a heathered look, but they're still the same color. If you can see all the way through this one, this one that has four of it is actually more of like a variegated yarn. It's not a tonal at all. So you can see right here how it changes color. And right here, that's also the same color. It's the colorway iron. So I don't love that. I wish it was a tonal, but I feel like in the granny, it's okay. <laughs> and I really like it. Um, the yarn is, I've never worked with this yarn before. In fact, I've never worked with, the only Stylecraft yarn I've ever worked with is the sock yarn <laughs> that I made the last pair of socks out of. So this is 80% acrylic and 20% wool. It's a bunch of 50 gram balls. So I had 500 total grams, which is plenty for a grainy stripe cardigan. Um, but I'm hoping it softens once it's washed and blocked and everything because it is a little bit itchy. And I know it's the wool, but it, this yarn almost feels to me like Red Heart Super Saver, but thinner. Now, I know that's crazy because Red Heart is 100% acrylic, but this is a little scratchy. Now, I do think it will soften up once it's washed and blocked, and I'm going to block the heck out of it. Like, this is going to turn into this. <laughs> It is going to get much larger and I'm going to kill the acrylic and it's going to stay. But the thing that I have to do first and the only problem with granny things is look at the ends. <laughs> I actually, this whole triangle part that I got that done on the way up to Alabama and then this part back here with the rest of the back, 
that is what I've done this week. There are almost a hundred ends on this thing. So, and there's no way with the way the stitch pattern, like I couldn't carry all of these strands of yarn. That would be eight strands of yarn up the side at all times. So that's just not gonna work. So I have to weave them all in before I can seam this up. <sighs> I don't know when I'm, when I'm gonna do that. I have, I almost sat down to do it last night and then immediately was like, why? Why the ends, why? So I didn't do it. So I really need to do that and then I'll be able to seam it up, do the sleeves and then, ooh, and then add this color on the bottom because I have three, three and a two thirds balls left of this still. Whereas I only have like, that's not very much left of this ball. So that is what I have been working on. Pretty much the only project that I worked on in Alabama. <laughs> it's the one that I worked on on the way up and on the way back and it is living in this plaid bag that was three dollars at Target. I'm such a fan of three dollar Target bags. So I have one more whip because I knew I was going to finish these socks on the way to Alabama and so I took some yarn I took some more Knit Picks Felici. This is the colorway Sonora Sunset. I took two balls of this. Of course, that's all I have is two balls of this, but at least I have two balls <laughs> instead of one to make two pairs of socks. So I took that with me and I will be perfectly honest, at the end of this sock, I was kind of hating my life and the heel always does that to me. And I really was over making socks. However, the only other thing I had to work on was that cardigan. Um, and it was too big to lug around. So I am glad that I packed two balls of this Nipix Felici because I did end up starting a sock. And it, this is actually the only thing I worked on for the time that we were in Alabama because we were scheduled pretty much from morning to night with activities. And when I had a few moments, there's no way I could have pulled out a giant crochet project to work on it. But this was in my purse and it was this tiny little bag. So it was really, really convenient to have this and just do a few rows. Um, of course, this is my sock bag. I'm thinking that it probably needs a wash. It's looking a little, it's looking well-loved, let's say. It's looking well-loved because this has been dragged all over Tarnation with me. <laughs> so it was a lovely gift from Claudia and it's my sock bag. So I have started another sock and I'm almost done with it. So from here to here, just the plain stockinette is what I did when I was in Alabama. There is no way I could have done anything else. I had no brain power. I was super tired and there was children running around all the time and people that needed my attention. So I just did the stockinette and then once it got to that point where I needed to do the increases and I started to start counting, put it down, couldn't handle it. So the increases and the heel turn I have actually done in the last couple of days. That's why the stitch marker is right here. So I did the heel turn yesterday, in fact. I mean, a heel turn is kind of magic, isn't it? Like all of a sudden you're going this way and then right angle. I'm about halfway through the heel flap, which is this little part. So I still have a ways to go on that. And then, like I said, I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do with the decreases because I want the cuff to be a little bit taller on these. These are going to match, which is going to make my heart so happy. I love symmetry, I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. But I don't really like doing the heel, so I have been slowed down on those. But I feel like that's okay. That is all I have worked on. <laughs> I say that's all I've worked on like it's not a lot. It is kind of a lot, especially considering I was traveling for a solid week. Um, but it's just weird to only be showing you three things because normally I have like a giant pile of stuff to show you and I have two project bags and a finished object. I haven't touched the cardigan we talked about last time where I was having the bulk problem right here. 
Um, I am going to work on the sleeves a little bit before I make a decision because um, I've had a lot of people comment that on a top-down raglan it always looks weird until you start adding the sleeves. I still think it's going to end up a little big but I you know I've already done the whole body I might as well add at least like this much of the sleeves before I make a decision. So I hopefully we'll get to that. I haven't touched my red cabled cardigan. I haven't touched my blurred line sweater. Oh, man, I haven't touched anything except for these three things. And I do have that finished Treasure Island shawl. So I have two acquisitions to show you. Some happy yarn mail came to me. A beautiful viewer of this podcast. You know who you are. Um, I appreciate you forever. She had sent me some wool-like yarn, loops and threads wool-like, like a month ago. And she found some more um, that she wasn't going to use in her stash. So she sent me this too. Thank you. Look at this red. My Michaels doesn't even have red loops and threads. So that is cool. And then these two are black and another blue. So I will definitely use this. I'm not sure on what. I'm thinking the red would be, I'm going to finish my blurred line sweater. I'm wondering if this would be enough to make a cardigan, this red. I'm thinking I might need one more ball, but I'm sure I can get that online. But let me finish the one I'm working on first. <laughs> so thank you so much for the wool like yarn. I will definitely use it. And of course I love wool like, this is the only cheap fingering weight yarn <laughs> that I know of that's worth its salt. Um, in fact, I was at Joanne's yesterday looking for some fingering weight yarn for something and I'm just so over the selection. So we have the new Red Heart, it's a wrap, which is cotton and acrylic, but that's a gradient cake and I wanted a solid color. And also I didn't really want cotton. And then of course we have a very small selection of sock yarn, which you have Patton's Croy, which can be a little scratchy. So I, I would not want to turn that into something around my neck. And I was looking specifically for a shawl. And then they have a Deborah Norville Serenity sock yarn, which is, it's much better as far as terms of feel if you were gonna wear it around your neck, but they had very, very few colors. And of those colors, they only had a couple of balls. And of course they come in only 50 gram balls. So if I'm gonna make a, the shawl that I was looking at starting, it needs like 400 grams. So, you know, I left without buying anything and I didn't really like the, I wish wool like had more colors because my shawl just, my wrap just fell on the floor. Um, I just wish I had more colors because I could do so much more with it. And I know like I wanted to be able to go to my stash and find four skeins of like hand dyed yarn to make this shawl, which I cannot remember the name of. <laughs> and I didn't bring my iPad over here so I can't show the, you the picture, but whenever I start it, you'll see it. I have a very, I know some people have like amazing stash piles of yarn. I have maybe 10, maybe, hand-dyed skeins of yarn. And of course, none of them go with each other. Actually, there's like two that go. Um, two of them are from Moon Tower Dye Works and they are earmarked for a very specific design that I'm not ready to do yet because it's gonna require a lot of math and thinking. Um, so those are spoken for, but the rest of them, there's two that go together, but I would need four colors that go together and my tiny little stash of hand dyed yarn that there's no way I could go stash driving for that so I think I'm gonna have to buy some which is what I was trying to do at Joann's but of course they don't have any fingering weight yarn ah <sighs> anyways first world problems the other acquisition that I have to show you came in last night at like 8 p.m. from Amazon This is a Chow Gu needle set. I said in the last episode, or maybe two episodes ago, that I have been saving for this. I've actually been saving for this for like a couple months now. <laughs> um, I used to knit a lot. Um, before I ever learned how to crochet, I would knit and knit and knit. But I only had cheap, like really crappy knitting needles, which was fine for the time. But once I found crochet, which is my one true love. Once I found that, I realized how I needed better tools in my life and I, I wasn't planning on knitting any of that and even if I was going to knit again, I didn't want to use those crappy needles. So I gave them all away to someone who could use them 
And I said, you know, if I'm ever gonna knit something, I will just buy the correct tools. Now I have to knit ten, probably 10 or 11 hats by the end of the year. They're not for Christmas specifically, but they just need to be done by Christmas-ish or the d January 31st. Um, I'm not gonna say what they're for because just in case <laughs> the someone who may receive one is, might be watching. They're not gonna be Christmas presents. If you're a family member, you're not getting a hat, okay? So don't pester me. The reason that I have to knit them is because my crochet hats are impossible. Um, I know how to make a hat, but my gauge is really tight. As you all know, I have a super tight crochet gauge. This, I can't make a hat as a surprise for someone not a crochet hat because it's gonna come up small. And I've tried to combat this by going up hook sizes, by adding extra increase rounds, but um, I've had several issues where the hat is either too small or I overcompensated and it's too big. So there's really no way that I'm going to be able to crochet these hats because I would have to have the people try them on so I could make adjustments because I know I would have to make adjustments. So whereas a knitted hat I, it's gonna have some give to it, it's a little more forgiving so I've got to knit them. I didn't want to go and just buy a knitting needle for the hat that itself because I may need to play around with my gauge for that as well. So I've been saving for a while for some Chowgu Red Lace interchangeable needle set. And I will say if you have purchased my Treasure Island shawl or you have purchased this Key Largo lace wrap because there are several people who have done that already. I just wanna tell you thank you because you have paid for 100% of this needle set. And it's kind of expensive, but I did get a good deal. I wasn't actually planning on buying them until next month, but Amazon sent me like a price drop alert and it had free shipping, like same day shipping. So I ordered them um, and I was able to pay for 100% um, with my PayPal account from P you guys who have purchased this pattern. So um, if this is what I, I mean, this is what I do with all the money that you send for patterns. It's gonna go back into tech editing, it's gonna go to yarn, it's gonna go for something for this podcast. So I feel like that was a lot of, a lot of talk. Let me just show it to you. That's right, this is a complete set. It's small and large. So it goes all the way from 2.75 millimeters up to 10 millimeters. These are the five inch tips. And they, it's the Red Lace interchangeable set. So they're metal, they have all their little carrying case. Let me see if I can do this without dumping them out. Um, it tells you like the millimeters, etc. It came with some extra stuff. So because it's a complete set, I have two sets of cables. So I get a 14 inch, 22 inch, and a 30 inch in both the large and the small size because the large needles, let me show you. This needle is not going to fit into the tiny cable. The connecting, the connector is too small. So this has to go into this, use this set of cables. And then these little bitty ones have to connect to these, this set of cables. So it really comes with 13 pairs of needles and six cables. Three for the small set, three for the large set, and you can always buy additional cables. One other thing I really appreciated about this is it comes with some stoppers for one end of the cable, it comes with a key, and I don't know if you can see like this right here. This little bitty thing, that is a cable extender. So for example, if for some reason, my small set of cables, it's not long enough. And I have a 30 inch cable, but I, what I really need is a 50 inch cable. I can just connect the 30 inch and the 22 inch and have a longer cable because they give me the little, the little screw to do that. So I really like that. It comes with an, ooh, <laughs> just threw this across the room. It comes with a needle gauge. And then it came with this little bag of different colored, different sized stitch markers. And I don't know what I was thinking dumb moment. When I pulled these out of the package, I had some girlfriends over last night and they were ooing and eyeing over the needle set. And I was like, what? I can't figure out what these are. Like, what are these hard little plastic circles? 
there's stitch markers. <laughs> Obviously there's stitch markers. I don't know why that was such a foreign concept to me, but one of my friends was like, um, there's stitch markers. <laughs> of course they are. So I have not cast anything on. I don't have any projects. There is a shawl that I would like to make, which of course I don't can't show you because I didn't bring it over here. Um, it's a kind of like a half hexy shawl and it's all stockinette. The reason that I would like to cast that on is because I really need to practice my pearl stitches. They're not good and I'm never gonna get better at them just doing socks because I only you only have to pearl for the heel flap. <laughs> so I'm really good at knitting continental now but I'm really bad at pearling continental and I need to practice. So I'm gonna have to make that shawl. So I'm not planning on knitting a bunch of stuff. Don't worry you guys, okay? I just need to knit a bunch of hats and I would like to have a set of tools that I can use whenever I need to. And so I'm pretty, pretty happy with these. We'll see how long it takes for me to start using it. <laughs> It may be a little while. All right, so let me give you a quick life update. When, so we went to Alabama, and then on the way to Alabama, we stopped off in Montgomery, which was a little bit out of the way, um, but they have a museum that just opened, I think in April, called the Legacy Museum. <coughs> Excuse me. And basically what the Legacy Museum is, is a memorial slash museum that details the history of slavery in Alabama and, and around America, but, but specifically for Alabama. It is actually built on the site of an old slave depot in Alabama, which I thought was, I mean, that's pretty awesome to be able to reclaim that plot of land that was used for something so awful. The museum was very well done. Um, we were there for probably two and a half hours. I could have stayed there for at least another hour because I wasn't done reading everything that they had in there. They had some interactive exhibits, they had videos, they had all kinds of stuff in there. And um, it was pretty sobering for our group to go through that. Because of course we were on our way to Utah, Alabama, which is, I mean, it's 2018 and that city the city has about 3,000 people in it, and it is almost completely segregated still in 2018. And so we were going there for a missions trip. Um, we've been there, our church has been there multiple times. And basically we are just going back again to help Jerome, who is a person in the community who's doing programming for those kids. And we were running a vacation Bible school. There was a middle school camp that we were helping with. There was a basketball tournament that we were helping with. And those kids are so sweet. And it was such a pleasure to be able to hang out with them and spend some time with them and just have fun and like be a positive influence in their life and like introduce them to Jerome. We ate some good food and um, on Thursday we had like a block party. So everyone in this particular community came out and there was barbecue to eat and there was like bounce houses and snow cones and the kids just loved it, of course, because who doesn't love to have fun? And I feel like in their neighborhood they don't always get a lot of fun because no one goes through their neighborhood no one really cares um, just so you know like the situation like no one really cares about Utah because all of the decisions come through Birmingham and for example there was a high school built there a few years ago and two weeks after the high school opened the gym floor buckled so the contractor who did it like did a terrible job and the floor buckled so they could not use the gym because the floor was a hazard. Now, if that happened in Tampa, they would fix the floor at least within a month or two. No, two years before someone bothered to show up and fix that floor. So for two years, the high schoolers were using the middle schoolers gym. Like, it's crazy to me <laughs> that the, they didn't, like no one even cares what's going on in there. So, Meanwhile, down the road in other cities, everyone has everything they need. And, and I'm not in any way trying to say that people don't have problems everywhere, but it's just really sobering to realize, like if you are going on a missions trip and you're going to a third world country 
or somewhere far away. It's easy to be like, oh, that's happening over there. Those are those people. It's not happening to us. When you think about like, this is in Alabama, this is like a 10 hour drive from where I live. Those are our people. <laughs> like those are our kids. Those are American kids who don't have all the food that they need, who don't have adequate school supplies and textbooks and teachers. Their community center has like two employees and there's 200 kids, over 200 kids that go there during a school year. So um, I really felt like it was necessary for our team to go to this museum um, and bear witness because there is a reason that things are the way they are. And if we're going to change it, you can't, we can't be going around making statements like, I don't know what they're upset about. <laughs> so it's heartbreaking. I was prepared um, because I have been, I, in, in college I got the chance to do like a study abroad program for five weeks in Israel. And a lot of my family is Jewish. And so I, we went, we took a trip to the Holocaust Museum in Israel and it was like one of the most awful experiences of my life but it was important to go and bear witness to what happened um, so it's just as important to go I'm if you're in Alabama if you're within driving distance like I recommend you go to the Legacy Museum because it's it's really well done and it just details all of the atrocities that have been committed against black people by America um, in the court system, in the slave trade, all of that. So, and I don't want to get political and I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable. All I'm saying is it was heartbreaking. And to think that there are kids who are so intelligent and so bright and have, they could have such an amazing future. They could change the world. They could do anything, but they're living in a community that doesn't believe in them that doesn't give them any resources, that doesn't care. Um, they don't have all the food they need. They don't have the resources they need. They don't have textbooks. They don't have a way to get out. There are not very few jobs in that city. There's very little that they can do. Um, one of the things that we've run into, the person there, so he has a group of kids that he's doing vocational training with, like to prepare them for jobs in real life and some of the parents have like pushed back and said I don't know I don't know why you're teaching them how to do this there's no jobs for them to have like they're never gonna get out so you're just putting false hope in their hearts which breaks my heart and I hope you can see that I'm not trying to I'm not trying to bash anyone or complain I'm just saying that those kids are valuable um, they have worth and they deserve to be believed in. And if we have to go back every year until we die <laughs> to tell those kids that they're worth something and that they can do something and that they can change the world and, and to give what resources we have and to just be a positive influence, even if it's they had one really good day because they got a snow cone and played in a bouncy house and heard about Jesus and, and had some barbecue. If that was a good day for that kid, then we've accomplished our mission because we're just planting seeds. So all that to say is it was a pretty emotional week, um, but it was beautiful. And I'm hoping, I hope to personally be able to go back next year, but I know of course, as a church community, we'll be going back every year. We've been there for four years already. So I was pretty tired <laughs> when we got home that Saturday, that Friday night. Friday night? Yeah. And then Saturday we had some company come over. So that's, person stayed until Tuesday and since then I have been a complete waste of space so Tuesday Wednesday Thursday I just I was so tired and it's probably just from going and going and like not giving my body the appropriate rest but I was basically useless like yesterday my alarm went off at 6 30 I could not get out of bed this almost never happens to me. Like I'm pretty much get up, go get a hot shower. Like you're fine, get some caffeine, you'll be fine. I could not get out of bed. So I just rolled over and slept for another hour and then I felt well enough to go to work. And I mean, I stayed a little late, so I made up for my hours, don't worry. But, oh man, I'm feeling much better today. I did not work out today. <laughs> I don't have the energy. I still feel like kind of like I got ran over by a truck 
That's exaggerating, okay? You guys know. And now it's Friday and I am recording this podcast. So I have some goals for today. I've gotta to go shopping and get a few gifts because there's some birthdays and um, we're meeting my parents tomorrow afternoon because we weren't able to get together on Father's Day. So we're gonna do that tomorrow. We're gonna to meet for dinner and then, so it's Father's Day. It's also my brother's birthday on Monday and it's also my best friend's birthday <laughs> on Sunday. So um, I've got some shopping to do and some making things. There will be some handmade things, I'm sure, as well. And I have to give my mom her Mother's Day present, which is this. <laughs> I'm only a month behind. And then on Sunday, it starts all over because Sunday is basically my Monday. So my Sunday starts my work week. <laughs> so it's been kind of crazy around here, but it was a wonderful two weeks. I'm glad I got the opportunity to go. I did some crochet. I'm so thrilled that this pattern is out. And thank you to everyone who has purchased it. You enabled me to buy that set of knitting needles. And I just appreciate you guys. You guys are the best. <laughs> I hope you're having a fabulous summer. Um, it's officially summer. I know I've been saying that. Summer solstice, longest day of the year, or whatever. It's been summer in Florida for like three months. So I hope you're having a great summer. Until I talk to you in two weeks, happy crafting. Do something that brings you joy, and I will see you in just a few weeks. Bye!